Hello everyone. I never thought this day would come. You probably thought this day would never come. But Paul Third has an apology for Waves Audio. And also, and also, oversampling Waves plugins. Can it be done and does it actually make the plugin sound better? So first, I have an apology to Waves, okay? I apologise for the Waves um, Helios comparison that I did a long time ago. One, I apologise for it being exported at 480p um, because I, it, was a, it was the first time I had Filmora and I didn't really understand how to work it. I exported it then deleted it. So the audio quality isn't very good. That's a bad start. But the main reason I'm apologising is because I believe in fairness and that test was the most unfair test um, that I've got to date. And the, the reason being that I didn't have plug-in doctor, so I couldn't actually see the curves, okay? So I had the exact same frequencies, but the numerics are very, very, very different on the Kramer HLS. What looks like you're boosting only a little bit, you're actually boosting a lot more than you think, a lot more than you think. And I'll show you that a little bit later on, okay? So it wasn't very fair, especially in the guitars. There was one where it was like, look at that, like it's dull, it's harsh, it's not very clear. And it was kind of almost like me saying, there you go. Don't use this plugin. This one's way, way better. But actually, the boosts were completely off. So tonally, it wasn't fair at all. Okay, so I thought, like, let's make it right. And then I also forgot um, <laughs> that I've got a DDF Meta plugin. Now, I've had this plugin for years. Long story short, I used to use it, like, five, six years ago, for loading VSTs into Pro Tools, because Pro Tools only use AAX, okay? So I didn't know that it actually oversampled plugins. I never knew this. So I was like, right, I, I had an idea I was going to do a video about oversampling Waves plugins and then when I was having a play about in Plugin Doctor and I noticed the thing with the HLS, I was like, right, this is a great opportunity to not only say, sorry Waves, not the not the fairest test, um, but also oversampling plugins, right? Now, very, 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 very quickly, okay, you need to know this, it's very, very important. Now, Waves audio plugins, okay, some of them, I've been told some of them like are internally oversampled, there's no proof of this that I know of, okay, but what I can tell you is that Waves audio plugins, uh, especially the older ones, are only supported up to 96 kilohertz. Now, if you work at 44.1 or 48 kilohertz, like me, 48k, um, what you can only oversample Waves plugins by times two, because again, 48 times two give you 96 kilohertz, okay? Now, this is very important because if you go to oversample a Waves plugin, say if you, that you've got a session at 96 kilohertz and you then go to oversample that Waves plugin uh, um, past 96 kilohertz, right? You do a times two, times four, whatever. What's going to happen is it's not supported. All it's going to do is it's actually going to multiply the frequencies. So for example, a 2.5k boost would be a 5k boost and then at times four, a 2.5k boost would be a 10k boost, right? It's just not supported. There are some Waves audio plugins that are supported. A lot of the, some of that Abbey Road stuff and a lot of the newer plugins are supported at like 180 odd k. I can't remember what it is. Um, so you can do times four um, on a 48 k session. You can do times two on a 96 kilohertz session. Very, very, very important. Now you might be asking, Paul, what's the importance of oversampling? Okay. Now, oversampling basically reduces aliasing. If you don't know what aliasing is, there's a great video um, made by FabFilter. I suggest you watch that. I could talk about it and it could be a video in itself. Long story short, it reduces aliasing. If you don't know why it's important to reduce aliasing on certain plugins, then again, do a bit of research, okay? Let's just kind of get straight into it, okay? So in DDF Meta Plugin, what I've done is I have oversampled it times two. I'm at 48 kilohertz, okay? So um, it's dead, 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 dead simple um, in DDMF, right? All you do is you just load it in. There's a little, you've got a real time and you've got offline, okay? So you, what you can do is um, to save kind of on CPU. Say, for example, you had a plugin where that was supported like crazy, like crazy sample rates, okay? What you can do is you can oversample it and instead of it wasting your CPU, you could, when you render it, um, it'll render the, um, the oversampling on. Okay, but uh, you can use the, the real time um, oversampling, which is kind of processing it there and then. So at 48K, uh, you could only oversample it by times two because that would be 96 kilohertz. So basically, what you're doing is you're reducing the aliasing at 48K by 
oversampling the plugin in 96. Okay. So basically you have less of those unnatural harmonics finding their way back into the frequency spectrum, which can then, again, they're unmusical, not related to the fundamental, so they could then make um, the sound muddy and sometimes harsh, okay? So, as simple as that, let's hear the difference between waves of 48k and waves of 48k through DDF Meta plugin at times two oversampling. <laughs> So, there you go. For me, that's a little bit of a game changer. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Um, a lot of the stuff that I dislike about Waves plugins has been fixed a little bit. I'm gonna say that the low end's a little bit better and it's a little bit cleaner. I kind of see that kind of, especially you hear it in the strums of the acoustic guitar. It sounds a little bit more dynamic and I kind of feel like that muddiness. It's, it's more muddiness that I hear on a lot of Waves plugins and, it, and oversampling it, especially if it's at 96K, I just genuinely feel that it's kind of taken all that muddiness out and it's a little bit harsh. There's a little bit less noise to me and it just sounds more pleasant and a little bit clearer there is a difference and I'm a little bit annoyed that I didn't know about this. Um, right, okay, so we've established that. I've picked out in a blind test as well so I can hear it and I do prefer the difference. You might not, let me know down below. So, right, let's make this right, okay? So again, I do apologise, Waves, for my unfair um, HLS um, Viridian comparison. So let's make it right. So as you can see, I've tried to get the curves as close as physically possible. It was a little bit different because the mic... Um, pre of the HLS that, that I used to use all the time when I used to use it on guitars. It has a really big um, spike, a big peak um, in the high end. So when you're actually boosting just like what looks like 4 dB at the 10k shelf, it's, it's a very, very narrow uh, bell curve, okay? It's quite a big high end hit. Um, but again, it's just for demonstration purposes, okay? So I tried my best to implement it in the, as you can see, I got basically the low end and the mids kind of spot on, and it's just that high end. It's just, I couldn't, it's just really hard to replicate. I had to kind of mix about the EQs and stuff, okay? So how about we do a test, okay? So let's see, we've got the original waves, we've got the oversampled waves, and we've also got the Acoustica Viridian with the frequency response and the curves as close as I could physically get. Okay, so let's hear what those differences are. <laughs> Thank you. 
yes, I picked the acoustica, right? Whatever, right? Throw your phone out the window, send anthrax to my address, whatever you want to do. Um, but in, in terms of this one, it was actually really close and I was struggling which one to pick. It's this one that I actually would say it's in the context of a mix. Um, the, uh, the, Virid the Viridian kind of sounds more like a cleaner, uh, well, it is cleaner because you can see the harmonics and there's intermodulation distortion in that one. Because what I didn't tell you is that the plug-in doctor you've seen earlier was at 96k, so there's still a lot of aliasing going on. However, okay, however, um, I think the amount of harmonics that's in the waves makes it a little bit more hairy. It's a little bit more in the low end. I think that's probably the intermodulation distortion. Um, it's got a little bit more kind of low end weight, um, but oversampling definitely does help. It makes it a little bit more clearer in the chugs and stuff like that. Um, so it was genuinely just, it was quite difficult. See how I'm normally like, I really, really like this and I didn't like that. I liked the both of them and it was just a case of me going, what do I prefer today? That's kind of the way it was for me there. So I would say that um, the both of them sound really great and in the context of a mix, the, the waves oversampled would work better because it's got a bit more low end weight, it's a little bit more hairy, um, it's kind of got a little bit more bigness because it's probably got so much harmonics in it and um, it's a little bit more gritty where the kind of the Viridian, kind of acoustic kind of has a little bit more cut, it's a little bit more brighter in the top end. You can hear the top end a little bit more. Um, so uh, that one generally comes down to preference. I genuinely wouldn't be surprised if loads of people picked the waves here because the waves actually still sounds really good. So there you go, right? I can be wrong, guys. I can be wrong and I admit when I'm wrong. So would I actually consider using waves audio plugins oversampled? Yeah, definitely in a 48k session, definitely. Um, and I'm going to start, I think I'm maybe going to do more videos, including Waves Audio plugins, oversampled um, to kind of show you that difference to see if I can add, because I've got so many Waves Audio plugins, right? Like, I, they're just a waste, they're sitting there doing nothing. So if I can get the sim that I kind of expect more out of them, then it could be of a benefit. Now, for anybody that's wanting to leave any comments, right? I'm just going to tell you right now, I do not care about that certain video that was made about the Viridian from it is shit, it is shit, snake oil, snake oil, smoker pinky. Okay, I don't, I don't care, right? Now, just, just to kind of end this argument, right? Because in the last video, I had to delete lots of comments because everybody kept on fucking going on about this video that he made where he said that the Viridian didn't have any harmonics, okay? Oh, there's no harmonics in the compressors. Now, Let's just end this right now. And again, no comments about it. I'm done hearing about this bloody video, right? Let's just finish it, right? I've got, I'll put it up somewhere here, right? There you go, right? There is the Acoustica Viridian comp, okay? As you can see, there is a button called a pre. If you click that pre, it gives you the linear frequency responses of the sampled hardware. And you have three different options because there's three different comps, three different linear frequency responses. And then, obviously, by engaging the pre, the pre also engages the harmonics. So as you can see here, if you genuinely just go one, two, and three, you can flick through them, and each compressor will have a different harmonic response because, obviously, compressors have different harmonics because they are different units. And as simple as that, hopefully we can just forget about that whole argument that Acoustical Audio Viridian, due to that video, has no harmonics. It does have harmonics, you just have to click a very simple button, and it's called a pre. So that is me done for today. Let me know your comments down below, what you thought in the shootouts, and have a great day. And also I've got another video for you that is all about the Acoustical Audio Opal and seeing if John Oram's group delay theory, I'm still trying to get my head, my head around it, um, does that actually give you a sound that is different to other EQs. So I do suggest you check that out as well. I've been Paul Third. This has been Mix Wednesdays. Like and subscribe. Click the join button if you want to get behind Mix Wednesdays. And I'll see you again next week.